Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today I am working on opening a new Etsy shop and this one will be to sell SVGs and digital art to use with Cricut cutting machines and silhouette machines and to use for sign making, t-shirt sublimation and things like that. So I thought you guys would enjoy to go along with me. I'm going to show you step by step the process of actually creating an SVG, opening an Etsy shop, creating a logo and listing an item to sell. So if you follow these steps you will have opened your own shop and be ready to sell your own items and actually this video is part of a series uh, part one and two this is part one on how actually to create an SVG so first I'm going to show you how I create SVGs that I can sell on Etsy and upload as files people can use for Cricut and Silhouette and things like that so I'm going to be using Eekscape to create all of my SVGs you can also use programs such as Adobe Illustrator or Silhouette Business Edition but I use Inkscape because it is a free program and it works just fine for creating SVGs. So first I'm going to open Inkscape and I'm just going to go ahead and set up my sheet by going to File and Document Properties. And I always select inches as my units but you can work in whatever you prefer. You can also get rid of the paper outline by going under Document Properties and unchecking the box here. And you can also turn off your background if you want to by checking um, Checked Background. So to create an SVG, you need to have an idea of what you want to make. You can find ideas on other Etsy shops or even looking at wood signs and t-shirts to get some ideas. That's how I did um, get some of these ideas. So I want to create a pumpkin in truck for fall with some other decorative elements. Also, first I select a photo that either I have taken or found online. And this vintage truck has a great side view and looks kind of like what I want to create. So first I just drag the photo I have saved on my computer over to my Inkscape screen and then click OK. I'm just dragging out one of these arrows to make the image larger so that it makes it easy to make a silhouette of this image. Now I'm going to use a tool called the Bezier tool which is this little icon here on the left and I'm selecting this option up here at the top. And now I'm just going to go around and create an outline around this truck image and that's going to give me a silhouette of the truck. So I'm just going to pick a point and start clicking around this image. If you happen to click off a point and it breaks the chain of this line of points, you can just go back to the last point that you clicked and click on that and it will continue the chain of points. I hope that makes sense. So I'm just going to go away all the way around uh, this image back to where I started. And when I get to where I started, I'm going to click on that first node to close the loop. Once you have that done, you can move your original image and next I'm going to go to object and fill and stroke at the top of the screen. And I'm going to turn on the fill of the silhouette image that I just created with my Bezier tool and I'm going to turn off the stroke. And now you can see I have a filled in silhouette of the image and I can go back in and use the Bezier tool now to create these little highlights. Um, cutouts that make the truck more realistic looking. So now I'll move the original image back under the silhouette. I'm going to select the silhouette I created, go over back to fill and stroke, and then just turn down the opacity to where I can see the image through my silhouette. Now I'm going to use the Bezier tool and I'm going to go around and all these little highlights that I can see through from the original image, I'm going to make shapes out of those and then we're going to go and take those out of the silhouette so this truck looks more real and defined. After I get each shape made, I am turning on the fill and turning off the stroke. And I'm also changing the color of these to white so that it makes it easier to see against this silhouette.
Now I have that done, I'm going to create some tires to go in the truck and I'm just using the circle tool um, to create some tires that kind of fit in this area. Um, and I'm also creating some more circles that are going to be the middle hubs of the tires. And you can just size these to fit on your picture or however you think looks good. So I'm just changing the color uh, to black and white so that I can see how these look. I'm duplicating these circles by selecting the circle and just hitting Control D. That duplicates the circle and then you just can resize it to whatever size you want. Now I have everything created, I can go ahead and delete that original image. I'm also creating a duplicate of this silhouette of the truck, so just in case I mess something up or something happens. Now I'm going around and selecting all of those little white highlights that I made for the truck. And I'm going to take those out of this silhouette. So I'm going to select all of those, go to Path, and then Union. And that kind of welds all these white areas together. And then I'm going to select the white areas and the silhouette at the same time. I'm going to go back to Path and hit Difference. And that just takes all of those white areas out of the truck. So now I have the um, silhouette of the truck with all the areas taken out. Now I can center all of those tires um, and do the same thing for my tires. Go to Align and Distribute under Object at the top of the screen. And then you can just use the Center Vertical and Center Horizontal to center all of your images together. And I'm going to do that for both sets of tires. Once I have that finished, I'm going to select the middle rim, which is the black rim, and the large white tire. And I'm going to go back to Path and hit Difference. And that just takes out that whole area um, so I don't have so many layers in here. But I just have kind of a rim looking um, silhouette of a tire. And then I have this middle hub um, separately that I can change the colors if I want to. Um, so that kind of finishes my truck SVG. And that's how I create all of my images. That's how I created my pumpkins and everything else that goes with this image um, on this particular SVG. Now I want to create some text. And I'm going to go ahead over here on the left and select this little A and type out my text. You want to first go ahead and change your font. And you can do this um, at the drop down menu. Just double click on your text and it'll bring up your drop down menu. So I'm changing mine to a font. I believe this one is called Figs and Lemons. The important thing to remember when you're creating text is after you have typed out your text and changed your font, you want to select the entire text box. Go to path at the top of your screen and then change um, your text object to path. That puts your text in a vector form. Design programs will not upload SVG text, only vectors and paths. So this turns your text into a vector you can upload to your program. Now I'm going to ungroup the text and place it where I want it to go in my final design. And once you do that, you can group all your text together and then add all of your other design elements such as your hearts, vines, anything else that you created and get all those in order and put them where you want them to go. This Farm Fresh is in the font Mother Tongue and it's a little thin so I'm going to go uh, to Path and create a linked offset. This allows you to drag out your text and thicken it up a bit especially if you're going to be using cutting programs sometimes thinner text does not work. So I just thickened that up um, to where I thought it would cut out nicely and that's a handy tool you can use with any text. I also did the same thing with the text down here at the bottom of my sign. I just th created some words and thickened those up until I thought they would cut out nicely. You just want to make sure you go back to path and change all of your elements object to path so that they will export as an SVG. You can also recreate new SVGs using the items you've just drawn. So here I'm just rearranging the items and creating a whole new SVG. You can include them as bundles or um, you can just make a new SVG to sell. But that is another um, neat thing you can do when you're selling SVGs. Okay, so once you have all of your items created, and I'm going to go ahead and place them where I want them to go. So I've lined all my mine up to fit on a sign. So this is how they're going to look after they fit on the sign. I'm going to go ahead and drag a box around these to select everything. 
and I'm going to right click and group those together. Now I'm ready to export this as a PNG and save it as an SVG. So first I'm going to go to File and Export PNG Image. You can also turn off your background um, by going to Checkerboard Background. So you just go back to File, Export PNG Image, um, name your image, and this one I'm going to say No Background ground save that and then again don't forget to click export so now you have your PNG created I'm going to save this as an SVG and I want to go to file and save as and I've already got it saved in here um, as pumpkin truck fall bundle SVG I'm just going to add the um, test video so I'll know which one that we're saving now. I also like to put SVG in my file name so I know that's the actual SVG when I go to upload it to Etsy. Save as type. You definitely want to change this. You don't want to leave it at Inkscape. You want to go down to the drop down box and change it to plain SVG and that will allow you to upload it to Cricut or whatever design program you're working with. And then I'm going to click Save. So now you've saved an SVG and a PNG. You have all your files saved that you need to make a listing on Etsy. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be a part 2 video on actually how to open a shop and list an item, an SVG item, um, to sell on your shop. So I hope you'll check that part 2 video out. Subscribe to my channel so you'll be notified when that uploads. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.